Hello and welcome to the Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samuel. With me today, of course, is co-founder of the Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. Uh, so, Peter, today um, the Russian uh, Foreign Ministry announced that um, uh, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's uh, visit to uh, Belgrade, which was supposed to take place, uh, I think, tomorrow, has been cancelled because um, a number of uh, Serbia's neighboring countries uh, refused to allow uh, the flight of um, uh, Lavrov's plane uh, over their airspace. And uh, that, the countries that were enlisted was Bulgaria, uh, Montenegro, and uh, North Macedonia. Um, the, the case, I mean, there is an EU sanctions uh, that are in place. Of course, it has no legality uh, because only UN Security Council resolution sanctions have legality. So EU sanctions don't have uh, legality. Nonetheless, um, in the case of um, uh, Montenegro, um, it is not a uh, member of the uh, EU. So it's kind of hard to see how um, it could, uh, it should take part in uh, all of this. Now, what, what nonetheless it, it shows that this expansion of uh, NATO, this expansion of the EU, does indeed threaten uh, Russia's uh, security. I mean, it's, we, you can see how uh, Russia is unable simply to exercise even its uh, diplomatic uh, relations we, you know, when the EU can just simply deny uh, Russian di uh, diplomats um, overflight uh, rights. Well, um, during the Cold War, was was a Soviet leader ever barred from no, visiting the UN? No, 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 none at all. And this, incidentally, you know, uh, after after Hungary in '56, uh, you know, when Khrushchev, within um, was a, yeah less than three years, he was already uh, in Camp David with uh, Eisenhower, uh, and, uh, and and again after uh, 1968, Czechoslovakia again. Soviet uh, diplomats were, uh, you know, flying everywhere. So ne it never um, happened. So, and that brings up a very interesting issue, uh, which was highlighted by a, an article in uh, Moon of Alabama today, which is what happens when uh, the war in Ukraine is over and after uh, Russia has uh, won. You know, we don't know exactly um, what form the victory will take. You know. Quite likely uh, that it'll just mean kind of the breakup of uh, Ukraine into a number of statelets. Uh, you know, we'll have you know, you know uh, Kherson and Odessa and um, uh, you know Novorossiya and uh, you know, and, and the uh, Donbass, and they, you know they all just sort of form you know, their own little states, uh, and then there might be just a little rump state left. But the point he's saying is that well, what happens uh, then? Because of course, NATO, if NATO is humiliated. NATO isn't just going to sh uh, shrug its shoulders and um, and say, "Oh well, you know, them's the breaks." They're going to come back and seek revenge against Russia, probably within ten years. Uh, they will strengthen their uh, position uh, in the Baltics, particularly in, in Finland, and uh, in, in, in uh, Germany will probably rearm Poland and, and and so on. So, what what should Russia do uh, in anticipation of? In other confrontation uh, in, in ten years' time, and uh, Moon of Alabama uh, suggests that uh, Russia issue its own ultimatum, which is that um, unless uh, Europe really cuts itself off from NATO, Russia isn't going to sell anyone in Europe anything, not oil, not gas, not coal, not wheat, not corn, and not uh, precious metals. Um, and that it will happen kind of overnight. That's it, you're, you're gone. That's it. not nothing, not one <laughs> thing. Um, and then see how Europe responds, whether they think that maintaining this, uh, this NATO alliance is worth the suffering that this is uh, going to uh, bring. Uh, I don't know if Russia will do this. It strikes me though as, a, as an interesting uh, suggestion. What do you think, Peter? Well, it, it, it may have to do it because just as you said, um, the, the whatever the outcome of the current conflict in Ukraine, um, it's not going to be acceptable to the West. It's not going to be acceptable to NATO because NATO will see it as a defeat 
and it will have to avenge itself. Okay, so um, yes, I think that the, the, there has to be a, a further step because ending the conflict is a preamble to what kind of settlement there'll be in yeah. Europe. See, this is what the comment, what most com all commentators basically never put into context. This is about Russia's security interest. Now, it will win the conflict in Ukraine. There'll be many Ukraines, a small Ukraine. I, I don't know yet, okay? But that, that's not going to resolve in security issues because NATO will still be there. It will be a wounded beast and it will want revenge. And yes. so I think that, I mean, I've, I, I've been hinting at this for a while now. I mean, the, see, and there's something you and I have disagreed on over our almost two years, everyone, George and I chatting, um, is that there has to be a break uh, because um, there's a built-in um, a built-in uh, assumption in the West that they must win, they must always have their way because they are more virtuous and better and smarter and everything else. And that's not true. It has nothing to do with geopolitics. Zero to do with ge geopolitics. Right. Um, you know, countries aren't good or bad. Okay, that's the, let the theo theologians and Netflix work on that. Okay. Right. Right. And so Russia is going to still be facing a security dilemma. And yeah. the one way to get to resolve that is to completely cut off. And, you know, like a generation cut. Okay. Right. You know, you right. go your way, we go our way. And yeah, that I, 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 yeah. uh, 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 a wake up call for Europe um, as they become impoverished. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I think so. I mean, where I think um, we, we, we had originally disagreed was that I think this would be an undesirable state of affairs for uh, Russia. But the problem is that um, uh, Russia now really has no um, choice uh, in the matter. You know, I, I, you know, I don't think Russia would particularly uh, want its uh, uh, relations uh, circumscribed in this way. So, you know, it only, it only uh, does business with China and with countries in the Far East and that um, cuts itself off from Europe because after all, Russia is a European power. You know, you know, its history was one being very much involved in European <laughs> affairs. You know, Alexander the first entered Paris uh, in 1814 and, uh, and, you know, Stalin entered Berlin in 1945. So, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, Russia is very much a part of Europe. And so to break from Europe would be a, quite a traumatic thing for Russia. But yes. on the other hand, it's very hard to see how that can now be avoided. I mean, like, as, as you know, that's where we started talking about what you know, European countries can just simply um, uh, cut off uh, Russia, you know, Russian planes that can't fly uh, in their airspace. Countries, incidentally, that owe their freedom to Russia. You know, but Bulgaria, there would be no Bulgaria without Russia. I mean, you know, it's, it's not even, you know, countries that don't like, you know, like Russia, like Great Britain, who's doing this. These are countries who are just showing their ingratitude uh, to uh, Russia, as I say, particularly for Bulgaria. Um, so, uh, but once you're in this position, then I think Lavrov is right. I mean, what is the point of de dealing with these people? These people are, are incapable of agreement. I mean, the moment they, they agree on something, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna stab us in the back. Yeah, you know, that, that's that, that's why for me, um, just cut your losses. That's the, the way I look at it. Okay, I mean, what are they going it, to? It's well, you know, um, Russia. Well, we will consider possibly better relations when you get back Crimea. And it's yes. like that. That's a non-starter. It, it, it's yes. not, it's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. And instead of, instead of making it a a, a long-term painful divorce. I think cut the knot and you know let it let things go where they're going to go. Right, right. Yeah, no, that, uh, that that's right. And um, and that's right. I mean, we were when we were talking with um, Scott Ritter a couple of weeks ago, and uh, um, and he said, well, Russia really can't do this because um, you know it's it's great strength and it's uh, value to uh, China and India is that it's a reliable trading partner. It doesn't uh, break contracts. It, it, you know, it says it will deliver something, it delivers you know, whatever your makeup, your ideology, Russia you know, fulfills its promises. And so that's why it will be very hard for Russia just simply to uh, break its contracts. And I think that's probably true. On the other hand, I mean, if it is a, um, a, a, an existential matter, 
uh, for the Russians. If they essentially, they, you know, they, they, they make clear to the Chinese, look, basically NATO is just gearing up for round two. I mean, this isn't a piece that, you, that, you know, they're, they're waiting for round two. They're going to use Finland as a platform. They're going to threaten our access to the Arctic. Uh, you know, we, we can't wait around. We have to act now. Um, and act two, act two, George, act two, George includes China being on the menu. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's exactly right. And I think the Chinese will uh, understand this. Um, that, uh, that, that, that uh, you know, this, this, it's very much, you know, the way they, they're playing this, which is, we'll knock Russia out first, then we kind of make the swoop in on uh, China. And, uh, and they may, you know, China's a lot more vulnerable, incidentally, than Russia is. I mean, first of all, China's not as powerful militarily as uh, Russia. Also, China's very much in, embedded in the world economy in the way Russia isn't. So Russia is almost entirely autarkic, so it, it doesn't really need uh, the rest of the world that much. China is uh, much more vulnerable. That's why they, I think it was always Russia first, then we're going to deal with uh, China. And our friend Liz Truss, I mean, she's openly says, hey, NATO has its interest in, uh, in Asia, and China is messing all around with our interests in, in Asia. So that's why they, they're open in saying that, hey, we're, we're expanding into Asia. But... It, it... To go back to the moon of Alabama thesis of, uh, uh, let's call it clean break, uh, for lack of a letter, better term, um, how, how can Russia continue even in a contractual relationship with businesses and governments when its assets are being frozen, confiscated, and sold off? I mean, that, that just isn't palatable. It isn't palatable. All right. Yes. No, I, I, it, it, yeah. because, you know, um, you, you can't just artificially, arbitrarily say, well, all of these things we can meddle with, but this we're not going to meddle. No, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't work that way. I mean, you, you, there's no trust that there's no belief that you're going to keep your right. word. Right. Okay. Not, that's... And confiscating another country's assets is a relatively new thing. Hey, okay? Yeah. They didn't do it to hit this Germany. They, they, they didn't, no. didn't, you know, so. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think so. And what the EU have been doing, you know, they think they're being very cute. Well, yeah, we, we need our wheat. I mean, we don't want to go hungry. So we'll, we, we won't sanction wheat. Um, um, and then gas, we need our gas, you know, because we don't want to go cold. So we, we'll, we'll skip that. Um, corn, yeah, we need our corn. Uh, fertilizers, yeah, we need our fertilizer. Um, but, but the whole idea that, you know, you get, you get to set the agenda. Uh, and you know, according, exactly. to, uh, yeah, according to what you need at any moment, <laughs> and uh, and Russia was like, but yes, yes, sorry, uh, I, uh, we'll, 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 thank you very much for allowing us to sell you our wheat. Thank you for allowing us to sell you our corn. <laughs> and it, it doesn't work that way, and that's why I think it'll be that Russia would just simply set the agenda and say, look, we just we, we said before we're not going to accept you know this whole NATO encirclement. No, but it, it, this just goes back like into the 1990s when, when Yeltsin was around and, and they had this energy charter and the ener energy charter, uh, it, it, was, um, it, it was passed, but it was never implemented uh, in Russia. And it was extremely one-sided. It was, well, um, well, Europe, European countries can invest in uh, into Ru the Russian oil patch, you know, I mean, ground zero. I mean, you know, you know drill itself, okay? Right. And, um, and we can have all of the, the um, uh, value chains, you know, refinery and all of that. But Russia, well, you, no, 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 no. You, you can sell us the, the raw material, but gotcha. you can't invest in the, uh, in the European um, energy sector. You can't have all the value chain because that's how it works. You know, when you have oil, oil is valuable, but it's a lot more valuable when you refine it into all the different things that people right. want. And that's why if you have a state of the art, um, um, a refinery like Belarus, it was finished right before the end of the Soviet Union. And right. even the Russians are saying to the, and, and, and they've resolved it, but you know, they're shipping this inexpensive oil to Lukashenko, Lukashenko refines it, and he gets a 500% knock uh, uh, increase on the same oil that he bought cheaply from Russia. And the Russians are, ah, they did the same thing with Finland when it comes to lumber. Yeah. 
all the lumber that the, the, the Finns were buying from Russia at a really good price. But then they, they um, made it into furniture and all these other things where the value chain, that's where the money is. It's not the lumber itself, okay? It's right. the value added. And so, you know, the, the, the Russians will say, you know, you, there's no value added with you. You only want your value, value added and we just get, you know, a, a, um, a, a knockdown price. They, 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 in the 1990s, Russia was too weak to say no. Now it's a very different thing. Yes, yes. No, that, 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 that's right. Um, and, uh, and it is very, very interesting um, how Europe will uh, respond because, you know, first of all, we, we don't know as yet, you know, how it's going to uh, take care of these oil. Having said, we're going to cut ourselves off from uh, Russia's oil by the end of the year. Uh, I, I, I don't think Ursula von der Leyen has managed to figure out, you know, the back of the envelope calculation <laughs> where where the oil is going to come from to make up for uh, lost Russian oil. So that you know you have that problem. But then if the Russians then turn around and say, well, that's it, no more natural gas, and then the, and then uh, the Germans say, but we are, our economy is going to come to a, a complete stop. I said, I, I, it's not my problem. I mean, they, it's your problem, you know, your problem or your own. I'm sorry, that's it. You know, your economy is, is grinds to a halt. Um, you know, so interesting at that stage, does Europe continue to believe that we need this uh, military alliance, uh, which after all had previously been sold to Europe as relatively cost-free? I mean, it's, you know, hey, you know, great. We've got this alliance, NATO, nice. You know, we don't have to pay for it. Uh, you know, it's, you know, we, the Russians don't like it, but who cares what the Russians like or don't like? Suddenly, hey, this is becoming quite costly for us. Particularly as we, George and I have said over and over again, NATO is a propaganda operation with American bases, okay? And so you have a choice, keep the propaganda uh, treadmill and keep the American bases and go cold in the winter. That, that, Go ahead. It's a choice. It's a very simple one. The, again, you know, you know, you and I have always talked about how people resonate with politics. Well, no, if you can't keep your house warm in the winter, yeah, you're pretty much interested. You're vested into that. Okay. Right. Right. okay. Yeah. You can, you know, people, you know, you and I can go on with our friends about the injustice against Julian Assange, but for everyday people, barely aware, if at all. If at all, yeah. No, then no, no question. You know, they, 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 they don't know it, um, but they do know about her food and they do know about uh, energy and um, now all the Ursula von der Leyen's and the list trusts will say well it's all Putin's fault um, no, so exactly so what hey you know you're you're in charge you know we used to get food we used to get energy we you know we we, we used to not go hungry we used to be warm in the winter now we're not um you know, they're not going to blame Putin. There's nothing they can do about Putin. They're going to blame the, the, the political leaders like God. And List, you've already had 14 rounds of sanctions and you're still cold. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Right. All of these sanctions, what has it done? Nothing except hurt Europe. Right. Exactly. That's all it's done. That, that's right. That's right. So, so the, the sanctions are obviously illegal but again you know nobody cares about that you know, you, you know the russians you know say these are illegal sanctions but you know okay everyone is now so used to sanctions that the issue of legality or illegality uh doesn't uh matter very much what they do uh notice is that the sanctions are hurting them i mean the, the whole idea of sanctions we're gonna hurt the other guy but we'll be okay that that was the point you know oh yeah well they'll be suffering but We'll be okay, but if we're the only ones who are suffering, meanwhile, you know, it doesn't affect them. And then they hear about the ruble is rising to uh, record highs, so much so the Russian central bank uh, is slashing interest rates to prevent the ruble from appreciating too much. Well, I think hey, there's something wrong with this picture. You know, they, you know <laughs> something's going wrong here. Exactly, and the what this crisis. Uh, of European security is uh, caused is that you see Russia's uh, economy and the value of its currency is a reflection of real life things. Um, um, oil, gas, grain, corn, 
fertilizer. It's, it's, it, it's based on a real economy. Okay, and that is a real strength. Yeah. And because as you, you've said, George, you know, as much as the Russians tried and, and, and Vladimir Putin's greatest hope was to have a very solid relationship with Germany, which is all dashed right now, yeah. um, uh, you know, they're not overly exposed and they have stuff people want. Barack Obama, yes, they do have things that people want. Okay? Right, yeah, 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 that, that, that's right. And it's a, that's the point, it's a vital commodity. So you make, uh, let's say you make luxury cars. And so every, you know, everyone thinks highly, oh, well, you know, BMWs and all these German cars, okay. But the rest of the world can live without BMWs. You know, you don't have a BMW, you buy something else. You know, you know there's lots of good cars uh, on the world market. You can't go without and oil, and gas, and grain. I can appreciate a Lamborghini. I really can. They're very beautiful. But the Moscow Underground is relatively cheap and very efficient. Okay, I can still appreciate a Lamborghini. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. That, that's it. And that. And that's what you know. Like you were saying about the Finns. Oh, you know, they make this um, great furniture. But okay. So you know, you, once you say well, we're not going to do without it, we'll do without the Finnish furniture. Well, that's it. That's your. That's your furniture business gone. Uh, and that probably is going to be quite <laughs> problematic for you. But you can't do without you know, these vital uh, commodities. And, um, and, and that was the, the strange idea behind the, the sanctions. I mean, the whole point of the sanctions been to deny somebody else commodities, no oil for you, no gas for you, no wheat for you. Um, but it's very strange to say, we're not gonna buy your goods from you. It's like, <laughs> well, you know, no, it's going to sell it to someone else because everyone wants these vital commodities. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not luxury furniture. It's something vital to keep uh, you know humanity alive. Well, what's going to happen? It, let's let's just uh, assume that there is a huge breach. No, no, no trade. Okay. What will happen is is that they'll, consumption will still continue. China will take this over. India will take this over as a global hub, but they will get all of the added value. They'll, they're the ones that are going to make the money off of right. it. Okay. Right. And so Lamborghini, I'll be able to get a Lamborghini, but it's going to be the seller, not it's Italian, right? Um, they're not going to get the, the, the total value for their car. Someone else is going to get it. So what you're doing is that you're, 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 you're cutting down on what your your maximum profit okay you're, you're not going to completely go out of business but you're just going to be not very competitive right. okay and your profit margin is going to tumble yes. it's going to tumble so yes. these sanctions these are you know russia is a very sophisticated place they're going to be able to, people are getting around it already right. i mean it's a it basically that Russia is VPNing itself on all kinds of things, on all, and it's going to continue for months and years on. Okay, right. and and I and I seriously think, and I I haven't read the Moon of Alabama article, but I have been thinking very long and hard about this breach because I don't see when this conflict in Ukraine, it'll be over for Ukraine, but the right. the issues will remain outstanding. Yes. Okay, no, I, I I agree because I think that. Uh, if one thinks back of the the sort of pre February twenty fourth crisis, you know that's you know historians will be writing about the, the you know the December crisis or whatever. Um, you know, we, basically the Russians were raising several different issues. Uh, they were they were raised, and you know it, it's easy to get confused among the different issues. But there was one issue which was what the, what you're doing with Ukraine. You're you're creating this anti-Russia you know, you know, uh, against us. Uh, and there's the other issue, which is the NATO expansion. Um, and, uh, and I guess there was a, a kind of a third issue, which is we have these agreements, these Minsk Accords, and, uh, and you've done nothing to um, implement them, despite however many times we've raised this issue with you. So, uh, you, know, you know, once they can deal with the Minsk Accord argument, they can deal with the Ukraine argument, there's still going to be the NATO argument because there's still that that issue is still there and and, and it's become very uh, problematic for uh, Russia and saying well the, the Baltic Sea you know that this is becoming uh, kind of a, a, a NATO kind of a lake uh, the Black Sea also very problematic um, we get you know they get these European countries can block our diplomats from flying wherever they want 
you know, we, we can't live like this. You know, this, this is just not acceptable to us, you know, and so we're going to have to address this problem. I mean, that's it. They're doing exactly, again, the opposite of what they should be doing. The diplomatic overtures and work of diplomats, foreign service, it should be sacrosanct. Don't touch it at all. It should be completely off the table. But no, the neoliberalism and this messianic um, 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 injection into, uh, into neoliberalism makes everything foreboding, which is ridiculous. You know, every single conflict essentially comes to an end through negotiation or through a fait accompli where you don't have a negotiator. Nobody, okay, who do I call? And who's going to sign the papers? No one? Okay, well, then we decide. And that's what's going to happen. We yeah. will decide. That's right. That's right. And I, and I, and I think that seems the, the, the likeliest outcome, which is, you know, yeah, that Ukraine will just simply you know, break up. There'll be all these you know, different entities that, you know, I don't, they call themselves autonomous oblasts. Uh, at some point, you know, they might apply for uh, joining uh, the Russian Federation or they might join a novel Russia. Um, but there'll still be a call there, no doubt, you know, dreaming of um, uh, revenge. And NATO will want revenge. I mean, NATO can't, isn't just going to uh, sit there, you know, with this humiliation, uh, having, you know, thrown everything at Russia and failed. I mean, it's, this will be a huge uh, failure uh, for NATO. So they will plot revenge. And they will try it, you know, 10 years time, 15 years time, they're, they're gonna do it. They're probably, probably yeah, somewhere around Finland and you know, and around the Arctic uh, and, uh, and, and threaten Russia like that. Um, so I think R Russia will have to act because the, the, the basic problems that Putin outlined in December, they're still there, that, that hasn't been resolved. Yes, and as we see the implications of Western sanctions against Russia, which actually hurt the West, um, and now they're embarking on a massive rearmament. I mean, how the, this is one of the the dirty little secrets um, of, of of NATO's um, uh, um, NATO's origins is basically we'll pay for all of your defense. Okay, we get to base you know you 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 always sing from the same hymn page. You always back us, um, but we don't expect you to do very much. Okay, I mean latrine duty in, in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for doing that. Okay? Uh, work in the um, uh, you know logistics in in Iraq. Thank you very much. Okay, but. Now you're going to have to, so you have a, an, an economy that is cratering, and now you want to go on massive defense spending. See, the, the whole European social uh, um, democracy gig was, we don't have to spend a lot of money on defense. That's right. And that was a re, that, that was what made it possible, what right. made it possible. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now, oh, oh, that the free education, uh, uh, we got to cut back on that there. Okay. Oh, no free dental. No, 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 no. Hearing aids, that's off the table. Okay. Yeah. Um, 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 a low income grocery stores, oh, we can't afford it. Okay. Yes. The, 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 I could go on and on and on because I lived in Europe many years of my life and yeah, there's a lot of kind of nice freebies. Okay. I mean, it's dwindled, it's dwindled through time, but compared to the US, right. wow. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, that that's right. And uh, and then you know, you, you, since you're already spending an awful lot of stuff that uh, that you don't have, so in other words, you know, you've got you know, yeah, debt, yeah. debt, the debt. You know, you basically you have to take care of all the uh, refugees, um, and uh, and now suddenly you know this uh, you know this, this spiraling uh, inflation. Uh, and uh, and then Germany now promises is going to pour in all this money into its uh, military. Uh, plus, you know, you know, you're going to be getting uh, your oil from the Middle East. So you're back in the Middle East. You know, you've got a lot of economic uh, problems piling on. And if Russia then makes its move uh, and say, "Well, we tried to negotiate with you. Uh, yeah, you know, we're just simply cutting everything off. Nothing." Yeah, you know, zip, zero. We're not selling you anything. I think it's going to focus minds. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to think, well, you know, where the hell are we going? Do I, do I have your attention right. now? <laughs> I mean, if you just paid attention on December 17th of last year, right. if you'd just yeah. been awake, yeah. if you'd just given it a thought, 
because ever since 2014, Russia has been thinking about these things, apparently quite seriously, okay? Right. Have you been thinking? Right. No, the European Union is doing this on the fly, on the fly. Right. And they're, they're, they're basically determining the future for at least two generations, the future of Europe right now with these low octane brains, okay? Right. It's so no, scary. Yeah, no, there's, there's no question. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's like we, we talked before about how um, if you'd actually implemented Minsk, it would have been a bad deal for Russia. You know, Russia would have had to basically give up. It would have to just move out of Ukraine, let uh, Kiev reassert its control over people who didn't want uh, to live under uh, Kiev's thumb, and there'd be nothing Russia could do about it because, hey, well, we're this is your agreement. You know, we're implementing it. Um, they didn't do it. And the same way that if they had come along and said, you know, all right, well, let's let's put a 25-year moratorium on uh, Ukraine uh, joining NATO. They could have probably done that and it would have been hard for Russia to walk away from an offer like that. Um, and they didn't do it. And now as a result, you know, the, all, all those other things that the people with antiwar.com, right? Well, if only we could promise now uh, no, no to NATO membership for Ukraine, maybe this whole thing could come to an end. I mean, that, that's gone. I mean, oh, oh. Those ideas that, oh, well, you know, Minsk three or whatever it is, some of these people are writing about. Uh, yeah, that, that ain't happening. Responsible statecraft. We can solve it. Minsk three. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Mr. Putin, I've got a great plan. Um, how about Minsk three? I mean, yeah, <laughs> a bloody good idea. Let's go for it. <laughs> That it, it shows, it's, it's one of the things I think is so tragic is that um, thinking geopolitically is it's, it's, it's basically not considered anymore. It's, you know, you know the brutality, the, uh, it was a, a blunder, blah, all of these words. Well, I always kind of, in my mind, cross all that stuff out, don't you? Because it doesn't really go anywhere. And it's not, tell, it's, you know, you're giving me a moral argument. I don't care about your moral argument. I understand, I want to know, understand how power is being welded and, and how, who gets what they, who gets what they want because they have the power to do it. That's called geopolitics, okay? Again, Go to your favorite theologian or Netflix for your moralizing of this because right. none of that helps. It's right. it, it just it's it just it's white noise. That's right. No, that, that, that's right. Um, and they say, yeah, that whole the idea of oh, this is brutal, brutal, or criminal, brutal. criminal. And then you say, you know, you ask him by what definition? How how do you define this as criminal? What what law has been broken here? Um, uh, and and so, but but that's it. I mean, they, they, you know, people write this stuff, and then you know, they feel good about themselves. Um, but but that but but that, but that's the thing. And so you know, if, if you've shown some wisdom at that stage, that you know, when when the Russians had first put forward their proposals, um, could have got a very good deal out of that. You know, because you know, you, you know, if you accept. In certain premises, Russia would have been unable to say no. And I think if they just simply said at that moment, okay, we're going to take Minsk seriously and, you know, we'll put a moratorium, 25 year moratorium on Ukraine uh, joining NATO, I think it would have been hard for Putin to say no to uh, an agreement like that. And then, hey, 25 years, you know, it goes by quite quickly. Um, so it wouldn't have been a bad deal for the West. You know, that now it's gone. Just like Ukraine's gone. I mean, I, you know, there's not going to be another Ukraine. But see, you and I always are trying to think geopolitically. These people, no, that means, no, we can't have win-win. No, 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 no. I win, you lose. Right. No, 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 that, you know, we can negotiate, right. but I win and you lose. Yeah. That's, that, that, that they can't escape that. They yeah. can't escape that mindset. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I, I've said for years, years, when you compare Russia to Nazi Germany, compare uh, uh, Vladimir Putin to another di a dictator or something, you know, you can't take those words back. You can't unring those bells. You, why, do you, why all the loose rhetoric? It's right. not going anywhere. No, no. And, they, no. and they're gonna have to live with it, George, yes. because they, they think that they're the mandarins of the universe. No, they're gonna be on the receiving <clears throat> end from here on out, the receiving yes. end. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, uh, they, yeah. they can't. They can't fathom. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 
then no, there were clearly um, opportunities there. And, and then, you know, you're going to have to then decide why was it all um, thrown away? Just like, you know, historians look back on the July crisis of 1914 and kind of why, you know, why, why did these supposedly intelligent statesmen not take small, reasonable steps to avoid this uh, cataclysm? I mean, you know, so, but, so, that's it. so again, you think back, given, you know, from December on, Russia was giving clear warnings about you know what it intended to do. It doesn't say you know hey when they say we're going to take military technical measures, they kind of meant it. You know they didn't just say it hey because it sounds cool to say that. I mean they 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 meant it. Um, but, so then the question and, why and, did Blinken and all the rest of them not pay attention to this? You know I I had a guest in my program. He said well Putin lied, and I said whoa 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 let let's take a step back here. Um, when um, the the Russian parliament accepted a resolution to recognize Donetsk and Lugansk as independent states, okay, because they had declared their independence. And that was a game changer. See, you, no one in the West will admit this, okay, because it under, undercuts their moral argument. Well, okay, under the UN charter, they be, had become through self-determination um, independent states. Under the UN charter, uh, article 51, um, I sound like um, Greg Jarrett now, um, um, <laughs> Article 51 of the United Nations Charter, that they, they can request a, a, a military and security assistance from another member of the United Nations. Yep. That was Russia. Russia, then it, that was the game changer. They requested um, um, uh, um, uh, um, assistance. They were under assault by the Ukrainian army, according to the OSCE, yep. uh, again, recognized as a, 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 a United Nations uh, official organization right. and Russia acted. So, you know, they, 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 this, the, the, again, these little things really count, right? They really count. That's right. And, and, uh, and what the Russians have said is that, you know, you people were so gleeful when in 2007, when Serbia, you know, it went to the world court and says, hey, is it legal for one part of a state to secede? And the world court said, well, you know, who the hell knows? I mean, you know, you, we, we can't, you know, maybe, maybe not. I mean, uh, you know, there's no hard and fast rules. And when the, the world court kind of came down with that ruling, there were all the high fives, yay! We, you know, we, we gave it to the Serbs, you know, <laughs> we, you know, we were right to what we did. And then well, this is exactly the Russians have turned around. These people, they've seceded. What did they do in accordance with uh, Article 51? They've asked for our assistance. You, you know, you can say to your heart's content, well, that's illegal, it's an illegal secession. Well, no, I'm just going by you know, you, this court ruling that you're so, you were so delighted about. And you paved the way, you were a bla <laughs> um, uh, uh, you blazed the trail for us. Thank you, we learned how to use international law. Yeah, yeah. And the Russians said it. Yeah, they said it at the time. They said it that you will regret what you did to Serbia. That's right. That's 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 right. <laughs> the Russians knew what they were talking about because they knew all of these problems that had uh, arisen as a result of the uh, devastating uh, destruction of the uh, the Soviet Union. They knew there were all these these uh, you know, time bombs that could go off, yeah, and said, so, okay. You set the principles. Now let's see, uh, you know, how these principles will, will be applied to all these, uh, you know, ticking time bombs. Why didn't Mearsheimer and Walt mention that during the Munch debate? Yeah, right. yeah. God, God, it was so frustrating. Yeah. All right, I think we've covered this here. Yes. Of course, George and I will keep our rolling coverage of what's going on in Ukraine. It's very, very important. Um, Please tell people about our podcast when we talk about Ukraine. And I just tell tell your friends yes, because friend. yes. so much disinformation, misinformation. Yes. What the what the uh, le legacy media and Silicon Valley, what they're most terrified of is information. Right. 
Yes. And George and I are doing our damnness to do this. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. Okay. This is the gaggle with Peter and George. We're on local. So please go to the gaggle.locals.com. Please visit our store. And today is Monday. That means tomorrow. Tomorrow is yes. exactly my live stream on locals, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Please join me. We'll have a great time. Come with comments, criticisms, uh, suggestions. Uh, and then before you go, you know, think of little body, think of the, uh, exactly sleeping now. I mean, it's like, you know, this is what happens when you get really depressed, you know, you just sleep all the time. Uh, so <laughs> I was thinking about that, uh, that tip jar, which never seems to fill. So, you know, let's, let's try and wake him up, see if we can somehow, you know, be, be, be once again, the life and soul of the party. So, you know, any, any change that you can put in be most appreciated. The more you're able to help us, the more uh, we'll be able to uh, make more videos and uh, more we can invest in technology. And above all, the happier Buddy will be. So remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.